everyone, it's Amy from Yo So Boho. Welcome back to my channel and another night of thrifting adventures. So tonight we are shopping at the Goodwill on 91. It's called the Lakemore Goodwill. It's in Akron, Ohio. It's kind of right down the street from me and it's probably my closest Goodwill now. But anyway, my mom was with me and I told her we have to go today. I have a 35% off coupon and if we don't use it, it is gonna go away. So we have to go use it. Hopefully we find some great stuff. We were gonna stop here and if we didn't find anything, we were gonna head more south and we didn't have to go anywhere else. We found a lot of great things, so that was exciting. Before we go shopping, I wanna show you something. This I found at another thrift store. I don't know when, I don't know where, <laughs> but I liked it because if you know me, I like things that are like made of different materials. So the glass and the cork always gets me. And this piece, I kind of found it and didn't know what it was, did a little bit of research, didn't find anything right away and thought, you know what, my mom's coming, I'll set it aside and I'll ask her, what is it? Because of course mom would know. <laughs> well, she didn't know. <laughs> But you will not believe the first thing we found when we went to this Goodwill. It kind of has a story with this. But if you know what this is, or if you have just a wacky guess, put it in the comments right now. Just add it down below. Tell me what you think it is. And then, yeah, go, let's go find out what it is and what we found that was even more mysterious. <laughs> All right, let's go shopping. Here we are. It is Sunday afternoon. We have a coupon. We are happy to be out. And then on the shelf, I spot this thing. Mom? <gasps> there it is, and ours is broken. Ours is broken. That's what it's supposed what is to it? look like. What is it? I don't know, but it's nice to see it that it's this one's all put together. Yeah, but what is it? Oh my gosh. And ours is busted. Or somebody sawed it off. For a purpose. I don't know what it is, but I want it. <laughs> we need to figure <laughs> we need to figure it out. Yeah, so what the heck, right? <laughs> what is this? We were fully confused because on the day that my mom got to my house and we looked at the other piece. It had kind of a rough edge around this little spout here, almost like it had been sawed off or broken off. And so now we were convinced that this was, you know, a piece that was whole. And now what, what, on, what on earth did we find? For $2, I was willing to get it so we could do some research. And now I had two things that, you know, maybe one was complete and one wasn't, but I don't know. And did you figure out what the other one was? I feel like I should set this aside and we'll come back to it so you have a little bit more time to think. <laughs> it's just so weird. We continued to chat about this weird thing and right here on this shelf, I start to find all of these really great things. So here we go with this kind of grab and toss in the cart. <laughs> Here's the first thing. I'm not even going to break away yet because then all of a sudden I look over and I see the second thing. Look at this mug. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to see this. It almost reminds me of like a flower child 70s kind of thing um, with a, oh, what was the name? Kilroy. Kilroy type of character hanging over there. And then, boom, I look back down and I see this really cool looking dragon, too. It was like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> really fun. You have to love when you're in one, like, one area and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, what's that? Whoa, what's that? Whoa, what's that? That's what happened here. I just like boom, 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 a bunch of things right in a row. So let's take a look at what we found right after we found that weird pitcher, non-pitcher corked thing. <laughs> this guy is huge. I mean, look at the size of this bird. This is a Holland mold, which means it's a hobbyist piece. Somebody painted this. I wish they put the date on it. A lot of times they'll you'll see a date on it. 
And these Holland molds, they tend to be like 70s, 80s pieces. I found this piece on Etsy as a blank. So a vintage blank, meaning you could buy it and you could go ahead and paint it yourself. Um, they wanted $28 for just the blank. I think whoever painted this, and this is why I picked it up, did an amazing job. It's really done professionally. Look at the work on the wings. And then the little baby, they're just done so well. I wish there was a little bit more depth and definition in the wood here, but all in all, they did a wonderful job. And I don't know. I think I am, I'm probably in that mid twenties range with this one too, maybe 25 to $30 and maybe, maybe a little less, but at the booth. So I don't have to worry about packing and shipping and all of that. This rather large bird with all these little sharp beaks and things, <laughs> but I paid $3 for it. So even at a $20 price point, you know, that's a pretty good turnaround. This reminded me, and I, I believe the history is like World War II era, but um, there used to be like a drawing and we used to do it back when I was like in middle school of, I believe it was Kilroy, where like you drew the fingers over the wall with the nose. <laughs> I Maybe the older generation who's watching will, will remember that. <laughs> but this is what it reminded me of, that whole Kilroy was here kind of peeking over. This is just a really cool pottery piece. It's made by Pump Pottery in Hawaii. Might be hard to read there. But for $1.50, what a cool find. These are not, you know, everyday type of finds. I've never seen one. When I look them up, there are a few listed on eBay. They're listed anywhere from the low 20s to the upper 20s. I think, you know, I'm probably, this is probably easily a 19 or $20 piece. For $1.50, again, that's a great find. I just think it's super cute. <laughs> I would drink coffee out of this, but you know what, if you, it would work better if you were left-handed because then you wouldn't have to compete with her like noggin right there, you know? <laughs> and then look at this guy. He's just a resin, red resin piece. It's, you know, probably a made in China. I did pay $4 for him. Not a lot of value here, but he's so striking. And I think on my kind of mid-century shelving area of the shop, he will pop out and grab somebody's attention real quick. And for $18 or $20, that'll be a quick sale. He's just really cool looking. A cat sack. <laughs> I don't get it. I think it's supposed to go with it, right? Because it's got the same yeah, coloration. Ska? Yeah, yeah. We'll make it Ska instead of sack. Maybe it was somebody's initials and they, they were cat lovers and somebody hand did it. I mean, obviously. <laughs> we like to make up stories about the things we find. I liked this piece. It was a little modern and I wasn't sure how the top was not fitting or fitting on here. So I passed on this piece. And she was cute up there. But look at these guys. Some good stuff in here today. Oh, look at them. Look at these little chalkwares. Oh my gosh. How cute are they? They're in such good condition too. I didn't get these, but Will from Will's Thrifting Ventures did. He was in this store the very next day, and it was so cool to see him shopping the same, you know, things. It was awesome. I will link to his video so that you can see some of the things that he picked up that you saw in the video that I hemmed and hawed about grabbing, and some of the things that he picked up that we may have seen, and he struck on which was very cool um but just i want to say hi to will and how cool he was invading my territory <laughs> he can come here anytime <laughs> i i have so many shops down in the akron area that everybody you know if you take a road trip stop in the akron area and hit something up we have good good shops here and if you're nowhere near akron stop in your thrift shops I am such a proponent of, you know, saving beautiful things from going to the landfill. 
go see what you can find. There are so many treasures out there. And why pay retail for something that you can get for so little? Like this beautiful fake orchid. My sister has seen this orchid that I have in the camper. It's just this silly little thing that I keep underneath, uh, you know, the sink and I pull it out and it dresses the place up a little bit when we camp. So I have this orchid, my sister wants it. And then the last time she was here and we were thrifting, she said, I would love if we found an orchid while we were thrifting. We should keep our eye out for an orchid. So that's awesome because I found one at this Goodwill and it's a nice one. <laughs> I think it's nicer than the one in my camper. <laughs> so, Cindy, I think you're going to get the one in the camper. <laughs> Is that terrible? Do I get the pick since I found it? You get the one in the camper, and I'll take this one. It's really cool. Look at how detailed it is. It's in this nice little pot, and it was $4. So, yay. That was an awesome find. I guess maybe I'll have to fight with her about who gets which one. There's this some dust coming off of here. I need to dust this. Best thing to do with uh, these kind of plants and stuff, and I'm not a big fan of fake plants, but the ones that I have, take them outside and use one of those air, you know, psh, shake them out. Oh, it's the best for uh, dusting them. Super easy. Oh, this wooden car was very cool. It had a really neat look to it, but it had some damage on it. And then it was missing this back panel here. Looked like somebody may have dropped it or something on that back corner. We're in the wood section, which if you know me, it's one of my favorite sections. I have not historically had luck in this wood section in this Goodwill, but I always have to look very closely at wood. That was nice. That was a little... I don't think it was hand painted. I think it was more of a transfer wear. But I do love the loons. And then right down here, I saw a stack of teacup and saucer holders. Like a display. But these just don't have to be used for teacups and saucers. We have one of these in the Yoso Boho booth at, currently. It's painted white. And it's just a great place to display other things for sale, um, mugs and little knickknacks and whatnot. I think this is nice because it's natural and maybe those who like wood and like this kind of oaky look will like this. I think it'll hang on our wall because we have a nice big peg wall and we'll be able to display other things. So I don't know if I'll wait until the white one sells or if I'll go ahead and put this in, but this was a nice little find for $5. They had three of them and I seriously contemplated picking them all up. I figured, you know, we'll sell one, we'll have one ready, we'll sell another, we'll have another one ready. <laughs> but no, I passed. I just grabbed the nicest one that they had and this will make a nice display rack inside the booth. Now we're over in the electronics and we're checking out some lamps and such things. They usually have, what was this, a camera? Yep, I had to marry it with its case. <laughs> um, lamps and, oh yes, here I found a GPS. And so I decided to check that out. Gino from Gino's Finds would be really happy with me because I went through technology stuff and I looked this guy up and although it's a GPS and it's a TomTom, -tom, and it's not worth a lot. What was in here was also a mounting bracket. And this mounting bracket on its own is worth money. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'll share it right here, what uh, I, I learned. But keep an eye out because even these older GPS systems, if they have parts in them that maybe people are looking for, they're worth some money. I spent $5 on it and that's a good deal when I could sell this on its own for that kind of money. I will have to do a little bit more research to understand if it's smartest to sell it all together or if I just list this on its own because somebody's looking for this part. And this is a dated machine, so who knows if anybody would buy this separate or not. But I, you know, might list both, this one and this one separately and see what happens. But for $5, I feel like that was a good find. Here I am checking out some socks and 
things, accessories, fuzzy socks. <laughs> I do like me some fuzzy socks. <laughs> and I found these. And these are pretty cool. My sister actually found a pair of these boot toppers um, a few weeks ago when we were thrifting. And then I move on to this little bin, and I think I find something in here too. Oh yeah, this. This has such a cool, fun, kind of 70s look to it. Look at those colors. Nice little pink inside. Super adorable. Mom and I split up for a while, and because she, she likes to go look at clothes, and she finds the most amazing things. Um, but I went over to look at some accessory things and that's where I found these. These are like boot toppers. If you have like tall boots, these go right in the top. So they kind of look like they're, you know, built into the boots. They're nice. They're this really soft material. They're made by Mucklux and they sell for about $20 retail. So online, new with tags, I'm going to say probably... 15 to 18 dollars um i could probably even do free shipping because they'll stick right in a padded envelope and mail pretty cheaply and then this was a cool find because it has some age to it i think it's a vintage piece but it looks almost brand new the material is yeah it's definitely got a vintage feel to it and i love that i opened it up and boom out popped the baby <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute it's like a coin big coin purse and little coin purse and it fit right in there that was a nice surprise I have not yet looked this up um, I think probably this will just go into the shop and I'll let this surprise somebody else and we'll just put a, a little price tag on it um, I'm gonna have to look up and I will tell you here what I paid for this I don't think wallets are all that much um, two or three dollars maybe but you know I think I could probably put you know eight or ten on it at the booth something like that mom and I met back up over here with the blankets and the textiles and we could not miss this piece it was screaming from the wrecks it was screaming look at my colors look at my patterns I'm so 70s Take me home. Look at this piece. It's just a coverlet. It's not like a real quilt or anything. It has like a quilted design on it, but it's machine made. It's just straight out of the 70s. And it has this patchwork look to it that is awesome. <laughs> I think, oh, I don't know yet if this is going to be on eBay or if this is going to go to the shop because I feel like somebody is going to see this. It's going to pop out. I totally see a college kid coming into the co-op and seeing this and just like, I need that for my dorm room. You know, it's it's a single. It's not, it's not a large piece, but it would be perfect for a dorm bed for like that cool hippie boho vibe. Yeah, look at it. Look at the colors in it. It is wonderful. I love it. We ended the store over in the glass area. We did take a look at the ceramics and the knickknacks and nothing else really popped out at us. But we did find a couple of glass things and this was one of them. This was the first one. And I thought this had a really cool look to it. So I decided to grab it. Doesn't this give you like a Pyrex vibe? It has these cute little designs that just feel a little Pyrexy, right? Even the little tulips across the top. It has no marks on it and I paid $2 for it. But I will be trying to find, even look at the chicken there. I'll be trying to find this, you know, what it is. <laughs> I feel like it's probably just meant to be a vase. Maybe it had a lid and it was a shaker. I don't know. I have not found anything yet for it. If anybody recognizes it, let me know. But I'll continue to do research, and by the time we get this up, if I have something, you know I will share. Over in the uh, clear glass area, Mom saw these really pretty, smaller, um, you know, short, like, rocks-type glasses. And 
I was able to look through the bottom and even zoom in here with my camera to see that they were marked with that L, that cursive L of um, Libby. So we knew we were looking at these pretty little Libby glasses. They were in beautiful condition, super fancy. So I decided to grab them. All credit to mom for spotting these. They are absolutely gorgeous. They are this cool kind of acid etched raised, you almost want to say flocked, right? Because it's like this raised vintage kind of material. And they're Libby, which was cool because we were able to kind of hold them up and see that they were Libby. We have not found these anywhere. And my mom has done some serious research, <laughs> like going through catalogs to find them. No such luck. Um, they're really neat because they have all these different kinds of flowers on them. We have not found any, you know, as far as pricing and comps. I have four and I think they should do pretty good on eBay. I see a lot of great Libby glasses and vintage Libby glasses um, that sell on eBay. And these are perfect. There isn't even any wear on the gold rims. So we'll see how they do. All right. Did you figure out what this was? Is it as much of a mystery as it is to me? <laughs> we don't know what happened here. We think maybe this is a manufacturing defect and that the one we have is actually correct. The one we have is a dispenser and um, they're more popular like in Germany. They have like nut dispensers. So let me show you. I have jelly beans in it, but here's the point is that you only get a couple you know, at a time. It's not like you pour them all out. It holds it really nicely and you can kind of, you know, decide how many you want and not, you know, pour them all out. But look at that. That is a weird thing, is it not? Because I saw this and I was like, who, what in the world is this? And then I saw this and I was like, what in the world? Like, uh, it just got weirder. Unless you know of a reason this would be made with this end capped off, I think this was a defect. <laughs> and I think this is made for like nuts or small candies or whatever. Snack, I think they call it a snack dispenser. So if you guess nut dispenser or snack dispenser, you know, ding, 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 you win. Bragging rights all day long because I had no idea. And mom didn't either, so <laughs> congrats to you. <laughs> all right, y'all, that is it. That was the haul. It was, I thought, a very successful day. We found a lot of great things and a lot of cool vintage and pretty much a 50-50 split for what I think I will list on eBay and what I think will go to the booth. Let me know, how did we do today? Was there something that we picked up that you would have picked up if you were thrift shopping? And did you get it right? Did you guess that it was a snack dispenser? Leave me a comment down below. Hit that like button if you like my content. And please, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. It helps me out so much. I love you all. Share this so we can grow our community. And I will see you on Thursday.